uh, June 18th, 2001. And if you don't die laughing at me, we'll have a nice interview. <laughs> Stan, the purpose of this is uh, here at the Mary L. Cook Library, it's come to our attention that we're lacking a little bit in uh, local history about our, our local service people and uh, our veterans, we feel like, are not getting enough local recognition and definitely are not documented in history. And since in school, the young people really aren't getting the local history of our local veterans. Uh, we thought it would be nice if we had this kickoff time where we've interviewed about 35 people and we're going to have a display in uh, the last week of June and the first week of July of these interviews and memorabilia and then it will be archived in the Ohio Anna Room here so people will have access to this history. Uh, but it's an ongoing thing. In other words, if someone finds out that you've done this and they say, well gee, they didn't ask me, you say, well, it's ongoing go to the library and set up uh, a date. There's a roster up there where you can sign your name. Okay. And uh, we will continue to do this, knowing that we may get one every two months, or you know, we don't know how that'll go, but the door is always open to continue to add to this. And then we may have a, another display in the future that we'll definitely be adding. So um, for the record, if you will introduce yourself and tell what rank and uh, what area of uh, service and division and company and so forth you're with. My name is Dan Jordan. I'm a resident of Waynesville, 703 Robindale Drive. Uh, pretty much spent most of my life in Waynesville, Ohio. Graduated from Waynesville High School in 1986. Uh, I joined the Army in 1985 as part of a split option uh, training where I would take basic training my junior summer vacation and then uh, continue on after my senior year of high school. Um, after about it's November of 1990, my reserve unit. I was in the uh, 705th Transportation Company, that would have been the 83rd ARCOM, Army Reserve Command, uh, stationed out near Wright Patterson Air Force Base. And uh, it's a 78, 718th Transportation Battalion. We were activated to go to S Desert Storm uh, in November of 1990. Um, we arrived in country in December of 1990 after some processing. And we stayed in the port of Damam for probably about two weeks. And we moved out near Dahran Air Base in a warehouse where we uh, set up, received our issue. And then we moved out into the field, which was near the, uh, the three corners of uh, Iraq, Kuwait, and Saudi Arabia, out in the middle of the desert. Basically, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> um, our company was responsible for hauling fuel for the tanks that were making the push around the backside of Kuwait. Uh, so refill fuel bladders for the tanks. My job specifically was to keep the trucks moving as a mechanic and also to go in and recover any trucks that had been broken down. So we got out of country in about May of 91, so I was there about six months. Okay. And how did being over there affect your life? Uh, I, I thought it was a good experience. Uh, it was a bit scary at times. Uh, had quite a few times where they were shooting down scud missiles real close to where we were at, so uh, we were always kind of hinky about that, uh -huh. kind of nervous about the shrapnel falling out of the sky because it was very close, uh, close enough to be hitting the buildings around us Ooh. and our building. But uh, fortunately, nothing of that, nothing like that ever happened to us. And, um, it was a real experience for us. It made you appreciate um, the refrigerator and the, the couch and the TV and, and the house and and the car and then the whole nine yards and being able to reach for a telephone and pick it up because we had to drive in total darkness in the middle of the night to go make a phone call because we were 12 hours difference than we were here so to call my then future wife at the time I had to go at midnight to a little tent out in the middle of the desert where they had satellite phones hooked up where we could call home so was, you learn to appreciate things a lot more. Sure. Uh, showers and, and good food and all everything. Did you come in contact with any of the natives of that area by any chance? Oh yeah. Um, the uh, the Saudis. Um, most of the people that worked in Saudi Arabia weren't Saudi Arabians. Most of the people that worked there were Egyptians or Turks or 
um, any number of, of the other countries that are around Saudi Arabia, but uh, in the small towns out in the middle of nowhere, it was mostly the Saudi natives that lived there, and they had their little shops, and we used to go into their little shops and, and try to get whatever we needed to make our life a little more comfortable at the time, such as tea kettles or whatever else <laughs> we could get to heat our water with. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, they were they were kind of fun. It was kind of fun to try to communicate with them because they didn't speak our language, we didn't speak their language, but uh, the old uh, trying to nickel somebody down on, on the price, and that's an international language right. to them, <laughs> so it's, it's pretty easy to understand. Yeah. So you did have some good experiences. Oh yeah, we met quite a few of the, the local like nomads is what they are. They, you see the sheep herders in the Bible and, and stuff like that. Well, that actually happens out there with camels. Um, people walking across the middle of the desert. You wonder how they got there because there's nothing around for 100 miles. And, and they're just herding their camels across the middle of the desert. Um, and like I said, in small towns and then the military people that we ran into from, from Britain and from Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. And, uh, Kuwaiti people who were so glad to see us when we were there. That's good to hear. Um, yeah, we ran into a, a good number of people in Saudi Arabia during the war that you normally wouldn't have an opportunity to see. Of course. And uh, they were very, very poor out in the desert. And you see the Saudis as oil and rich people, and for the most part they are in the big cities. But uh, out in the middle of the desert, they're just poor. They live in cardboard huts and out in the middle of the desert and they just get by. Probably felt like you stepped back in time, didn't you? Very much so. Back into biblical times. Yeah. And, and they were so happy that when we were leaving, we were throwing things away, as the U.S. government tends to do, you know, so they don't have to carry it back. And they were glad to grab everything they could get. Mm. So we were glad to get it done. Yeah. Was there one incident while you were over there that stands out in your mind that, you know, like moved you so that it lasts a lifetime in your memory? Uh, the first time that they uh, shot a Patriot off and shot a scud out of the sky pretty close to the building. Which one of those things that made me wake up <laughs> for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the fireworks at the 4th of July really don't do it justice. It's, uh, it's about five times louder than fireworks would be. and uh, Probably very much scary. Uh, like I said, uh, when, they, when they shot the first one down over top of us, uh, shrapnel was falling out of the sky and it was sounded like rain on top of the roof. And, uh, of course they were scared to death that it was going to be loaded with chemicals so we were all in chemical suits and gas masks for the next 24 hours uh -huh. which was not nice in the heat of Saudi Arabia. Um, but uh, kind of woke you up. <laughs> it's one of those things you never forget. But you didn't encounter any of the chemical? No we never got any of the chemical. Uh, it's as far as they're telling us they didn't use it. Um, now you were over there quite a long time. Do you find that you bonded with those people you served with over there? I mean, your fellow veterans more because of the living circumstances and have stayed in touch with them. Or? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We uh, we had uh, what they call GP mediums, uh, which are canvas tents, and uh, ours basically, as the name would say, is a medium-sized tent where we, we could fit eight people in it. And, uh, we had uh, four on each side of the tent got to be a pretty tight group of people, especially uh, since we had already been serving together in, in the reserve unit, and now we were living together in, in the worst of conditions yeah. that at least we'd ever seen. Um, we, uh, we got we got bonded pretty good. I still talk to quite a few of them Do you? today. Great. So. Was there anyone locally here, anyone you knew locally that no, you uh, up over there with? No, there's nobody from here around Waynesville, but we had some, uh, we had some, quite a few people from the Dayton area. Some people that were from over in Clinton County and the one okay. in the Wilmington area. So that's not too far. Right. Great. Um, all in all, do you feel like your your military experience has been positive, and if so, in what ways has it helped you in, in uh, civilian life? And are there any negatives that that really concern you? Well, actually, I, I look at my military experience as, as all positive. Uh, it may not seem so at the time or at times. Uh, of course, the military life is that way. Uh, but uh, I feel like 
particularly at the time that I joined the military, which was when I was 17 and not out of high school yet. I think it gave me a little edge in life as far as discipline and, and uh, reliability and responsibility. So uh, I took off from there. And, uh, the experience of going to war is really something that you hold back in your mind for the rest of your life. And, and even though I didn't actually have to kill anybody, uh, which is good for me, I, I'd rather not have to. Right. But uh, you never know what what would happen if you ever got in a situation where you needed to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I still get in that situation. So. Sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's a really it makes you appreciate your life a lot more when you go to a place like Saudi Arabia and see those people that, that don't have anything and they live out in the middle of the desert where there's no grass, there's no trees, there's no food, there's no water, there's no anything, and they survive. We have a pretty good we really do. But the military experience for me really was was the start of my adult life and I, I think that was a good start. It's a good start for me. Right? Okay. That's that's good. I have found uh, in, in these interviews that most of the men, even the ones that have seen terrible war times, some of them sat right here and cried when they told their story. They still felt like the military it made them, you know, better, better men because of the discipline and responsibility. Um, assuming that you have nothing else to share, if you do, please go ahead. Um, your closing remarks, when, when young people are viewing this, are doing some research about your time over there, what would be your closing remarks to them? I would say that, uh, Just to have a little bit of respect, especially for, for those people that were in World War II or in Vietnam. And I know that our war seemed like it was a little bit easier, and it, it probably was due to the technology that we had. But respect those people that have went out there and did that, um, so that you'll have the standard of living that you have now. Um, and by all means, if you have an opportunity to join the military, even for a short period of time, it'd be the best thing for you in your life. And it will change your outlook make you a better person. Okay. Yeah, I said that too. I think it would be for sure. Thank you, Stan. Is there anything else you want to share with us? Okay. Thank you so much. It's nice. Dan, I'll get your picture here.